Tonight, the OSBI continues its investigation. Britton Follett joins us now with the latest on that. Britton? At this point, no one has been arrested for this, and that's because investigators have spent the last day talking to anyone who may have had contact with Kelsey before she died. Now, the complete medical examiner's report won't be out for a couple of weeks, but we do know that Kelsey died of blunt force trauma to the abdomen, and her death has been ruled a homicide. The email we mentioned earlier documents abuse that started back in January. It says Kelsey's mom lost custody earlier this year, and the girl went to live with Grandma. Then in June, a judge granted custody back to mom. In cases like this one, a judge takes a series of reports into account and has the power to overrule any DHS recommendation. Well, that's their role. They have the authority to do that. And uh, our recommendation certainly isn't the only evidence that they take into consideration in rendering that kind of decision. Now, there are a number of reports out there related to this case, but we can't see them until someone is arrested and charged with Kelsey's murder. Because of family feuding, there were two funerals today, one for the father's side of the family and one for the mother's side. And today, for the first time, Kelsey's mother's side of the family spoke out. On Tuesday, just hours after Kelsey died, her father came home from serving in Iraq. And now this morning... His family and friends gathered to remember Kelsey. Kelsey's paternal grandfather says initially their side of the family was not allowed to have a funeral for Kelsey. But then a judge granted them two hours to say their goodbyes. This afternoon, Kelsey's maternal family gathered in Meeker to remember the little girl. And for the first time, they spoke out about Kelsey. Kelsey was a healthy, happy, rambunctious child until the... It got court involved in the court case. She's smart as a tack. She was counting up to 14 on her own. Kelsey died on Tuesday after her stepfather called 911 saying the little girl had a seizure. Eventually she started having seizures. And uh, we think the seizure is what killed her. She had a bad seizure. The medical examiner says Kelsey died from blunt trauma to her abdomen. Today they say goodbye, but both families are still looking for answers. Answers for the numerous bruises, scrapes, and broken bones that will forever scar these pictures. The truth will come out, and if it comes through the court, then that's fine. But this child was dearly loved by all of our family. Kelsey's father's family did not want to talk on camera today. Her paternal grandfather told us over the phone the system failed his granddaughter. He also says his family will do everything they can to make sure what happened to Kelsey doesn't happen to another child. Tamara? And meanwhile, the OSBI is calling this case a homicide. They tell us they are continuing to follow the leads this weekend. So far, there have been no arrests in the case. Right now, the search for Kelsey's killer continues. We can tell you that two OSBI officers are right now conducting interviews inside of the Meeker Police Department. They are talking with, right now, the paternal grandparents, Royce and Kathy Briggs. Now, when asked the investigators why this is taking so long, they say it's a very complicated case. They want to make sure they have all the facts before they make any arrests. Kelsey Smith Briggs was killed one week ago from a blunt force trauma to the stomach. Family we've spoken with say it wasn't the first time she was a victim, documenting two broken legs, a broken nose, and bruises. Dozens of people have been interviewed. The fact some are being questioned again is not uncommon in a case like this. After nearly an hour and a half, the interviews inside are now complete. The grandparents didn't want to talk about what was said inside, and the investigators couldn't say much either. When I asked them if they were close to being finished with the investigation, they say they don't give out timelines, nor do they give out suspect information. The stepfather of a two-year-old girl that was killed is now under arrest. Kelsey Briggs was found dead nine days ago in Meeker. The medical examiner says she died from a blow to the stomach. After investigators interviewed dozens of people, police took Kelsey stepfather Michael Lee Porter into custody. Eyewitness News 5's Tim Sakahara has been following this investigation closely. Tim is with us now live from the Lincoln County Jail in Chandler. Tim. Jessica, after going through all the evidence, investigators say they have their man and now Mike Porter sits behind this wall in a jail cell arrested for murder. Nine days after Kelsey Smith Briggs was killed, her stepfather, Mike Porter, was arrested for murder in the first degree. He was picked up at his office and arrested and walked past a picture of Kelsey that had been taped to the wall. He just stood up and he said, call my lawyer. Porter rode with the Lincoln County Sheriff. 
who says he didn't say anything else on the 15-minute trip from Meeker to the jail in Chandler. The sheriff also says Porter didn't look surprised. Meanwhile, family and friends were. You know, if he did this, then he just fooled everybody. He just fooled Ray Dawn, Gala, the family, people that works for him. You know, it's just, it's just hard to believe. I can't understand this. It just, it just doesn't make sense to me. We're told the investigation revealed extremely incriminating evidence. The affidavit says it was not an accident. Kelsey had bruises not only on her chest, sides, and back, but also on her lip, as well as near her bottom and vaginal area. And she had intestinal bleeding. I'm already touched and hurt over the baby. <clears throat> you know, no baby should have to go through uh, or, or, or experience what that baby went through. Porter did have his first court appearance today and was read his formal charges. And for now, he will stay behind a jail cell because he was denied bond. And we are told he will have a separate bond hearing coming up soon. Today in an arrest affidavit, the medical examiner revealed more information about Kelsey's injuries. It says Kelsey had major abdominal trauma and it was non-accidental abdominal trauma. She had a lot of bleeding in her intestines, bruising on pressure points of ribs, front of chest, side and back. Kelsey also had bruising between the legs. The medical examiner believes the injuries could have been caused from possible kneeing, punching, or squeezing. Kelsey also had upper lip bruising. And for the first time, we have insight into what happened the afternoon Kelsey died. Her mom, Radon Porter, was out of the house picking up Michael's daughter from school. Michael says Kelsey was having a seizure. By the time Radon got back, Kelsey was unconscious. Kelsey's grandparents on dad's side took these pictures in August, the last time they saw Kelsey alive. It was hard to see her um, with all the marks and, and bruises, and, uh, but I think the hardest thing of all was that we all knew something was going on and knew that there were people that could help and they uh, just wouldn't listen. Kelsey cried for help. She was sitting beside me and she panicked and started crying saying she didn't want to see Mike she didn't want to see daddy Mike grandma listened and cried for help even louder I've not only emailed DHS she emailed the governor lieutenant governor every legislator the attorney general every TV station everybody this is the end result nobody listened no no it had been months since they saw Kelsey and the last visit was one they'd never forget when I got there um, there was no excitement because she looked so bad. The, um, she was bruised and she couldn't hardly, she didn't even, couldn't even hardly talk. Grandma's next cry for help to investigators had pictures attached. And I wrote her a letter and I told her. I didn't think that Kelsey, if somebody didn't do something, I didn't feel like Kelsey would still be alive when her daddy got home. Grandma was right. I just told him that she was gone. He just started screaming. Making it hard to listen to the things police believe Daddy Mike did to Kelsey. In the arrest warrant, Michael Porter says that day Kelsey was having a seizure and he tried to give her CPR. But the medical examiner says Kelsey's injuries weren't an accident. She had bleeding in her intestines, bruising all over her body and between her legs. I can't even imagine somebody picking her up and spanking her. Let alone that, I, don't, I can't imagine. I can't even fathom it in my head. Like Grandma's letters, no one heard Kelsey's last cry for help. We weren't trying to take Kelsey from anybody. We weren't. We just wanted her to be safe. Grandma showed us evidence of months of abuse dating back to January, including bruises, a broken collarbone, and two broken legs. In June, the judge took custody away from Grandma and Grandpa, giving it back to Kelsey's mom, Ray Dawn, and Mike Porter. Once charges are filed, we will be able to look at Kelsey's complete DHS and medical records. Back to you. All right, Brittany, the arrest warrant says the day Kelsey died, she was asleep when Ray Don left her alone with Mike Porter while she picked up his daughter from school.